There's a popular idea in our society that if you want to find fulfillment, you have to get it by finding it in a bunch of different things. But oftentimes, diffused attention leads to diminished results. In this episode, we will be talking with Brian, who for a while was actively pursuing one path in life just to do a complete 180 pivot in order to actively pursue the things that he felt God was calling him towards. So let's learn more about fulfillment and finding our calling as we listen to Brian's story. So uh, to kind of like start off, Brian, uh, can you tell me like what is like the, the ministry or the work that, that you're currently doing? Okay. Um, well, the name of our ministry is Empowered Christian Ministries, and we do a lot of different things from training, coaching, counseling evangelism, um, lots of different stuff. But the basic premise, the overarching vision and goal of the ministry is to advance the kingdom of God globally. Mm -hmm. So obviously we, uh, I realize that we need to sort of think global, act local. So I'm always globally minded, thinking of the big picture of the kingdom of God, but realizing that it starts one believer at a time, you know, one church at a time and, you know, one city at a time and, and expand outward from there. So, so is it like you guys are, um, helping to connect people like uh, in churches or you're kind of like giving resources to churches? Um, probably more the, the latter. Um, we like, there's a whole kind of outline of, of what we do, um, educate individuals and, and obviously so I can communicate and, and teach an individual one-on-one -on -one or go to a church and teach a whole church, you know, and that kind of thing. So it's about education. Um, it's about um, equipping, you know, so actually preparing for deployment, if you will, you know, not just, not just education for the sake of education, but education for the sake of discipleship, for the sake of empowerment, for the sake of being ready to actually go out and do something. You know, it's not, it's not my goal to just make educated Christians, but empowered ones that are actually going out and living out the calling that God has put on their lives. What kind of like, uh, like what led you to, to be in that ministry? Um, that's a, that's a long journey. Um, mm -hmm. I started out not even in ministry. I'm sort of a late bloomer when it comes to all this. I was born and raised Catholic. So I was um, sort of in that side of the Christian church. But, um, you know, so I, I wouldn't say I had a close relationship with God. It was very distorted. Um, and then I had a period all through high school where I just, I still called myself a Christian, still wore a cross on my neck, but I was living very far from God, living um, wicked and sinful. And it wasn't until, until much, much later that um, I got in, you know, I got into my own career, starting business, doing advertising and marketing type stuff and web design and all things like that. And I feel like, there, you know, there's, I was probably in my late twenties, um, starting to already feel this, and it, but it wasn't until, um, I was in my early thirties and started to realize this just isn't fulfilling. Um, and I started to, I started to reconnect with God and, and kind of, um, start to uh, realized that there was a lot missing and I, at first I started to become a life coach and started to get training to be a life coach I'm like I need to be more personal I want to help people I want to I want to be more involved in people's lives and not stuck in a you know my dungeon office just behind a computer all day and ironically so um you know it still happens yeah but um you know so I, I wanted to be more connected and throughout these couple of years I was working towards this I started to listen to bible studies to and from work and the Lord just started calling me and and you know, it's, I went through a, a transformation over a couple of years where um, it wasn't about what I thought it was going to be about, you know, and so ministry can't, I didn't plan it. It just kind of happened and just sort of evolved that way. And so, but yeah, it's when the Lord starts calling, you just, you have to listen and obey and, and you, you can tell that there's fulfillment in starting to obey and walk in that path, or you can sort of deny it and do your own thing for a long time. But I had already done that, <laughs> you know, my whole, my whole twenties was, was like that. So when I realized that, um, I'm like, okay, it's, I'm going to give you everything now. <laughs> mm, that's pretty cool. I like, I had like a similar experience to where it was like, continue, yeah. like it was one thing, one thing after another, it was like, okay, I, f I don't feel fulfilled in this area. I'm going to, I'm going to move on to this next thing. And then like, you had the brief moment of like, kind of like euphoria and like optimism. And then eventually it's just unfulfillment. And it's like, oh, all right, well, what's, what's the next thing? It was like bouncing back and forth. Event eventually it led to the point where kind of like you said, it was just like, okay, God, fine. I'm done. Like, let's do it your way. Let's, yeah, <laughs> let's yeah, see how this yeah. goes. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for this. Yeah. I tried all the other stuff and I realized, you know, once you start reading the Bible, it becomes a lot clearer. That was one of the things I called myself a Christian, but I was not, I was not reading the word. I was not actively engaged in a local church. And so it's easy to sort of have some right beliefs and still be pretty far away from God's ideal plan for your life. And it's really just by his grace alone that he preserves you and you get that wake up call one day. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm thankful for 
and my parents weren't super religious they still aren't and but I'm, I'm still thankful they put me in a catholic church and a catholic school um that i was in from kindergarten to eighth grade and, and i have a lot of mixed thoughts about catholicism these days and i've pretty much openly against it. Um, but I realized that we have enough, there's enough commonality there where um, there's some important truths that are still embraced within the Catholic church. I mean, who God is, is still the same, who Jesus is the same and um, the importance of the cross. But so I'm happy that I had all that instilled in me at a young age. So then when I went through my struggles when I was 17, I went to God and I said, Lord, I don't know what to do and I need help and you know and I felt like he ministered to my heart and when I was going through struggles when I was about 25 um it was another major breakup you know relationships became somewhat of an idol for me for a long time and broke up and I was like I need to be reconnected and God was there and I went to him and he sort of ministered to my heart and I was like okay and then it happened again when I was 30 got out of a bad relationship and I said wow every time I get into these relationships I put all my all my heart and energy and mind and soul into this relationship and, and inevitably you end up putting God way on the back burner whenever you do that in life. Um, you know, so for me it was relationships, but also it was career, fitness, it was a bunch of stuff. And, and then I ended up, you know, I kind of got that, I think, I, I can't remember exactly when it happened, but I, the Lord kind of brought to my mind the story of how Peter denied Jesus three times. And, and I thought, I'm like, wow, this is my third time. My third time really going through something tough in life and feeling like my whole world's falling apart and then going to God with that, which I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I had that foundation to do that, to know to do that, and to still believe in him and to still believe that I could do that. Um, and then to get to the direction. And then, but then to sort of fall away back on the, put him on the back burner again every time. And I said, all right, this is the third time. That's it. I'm not doing it anymore. I am going to give you everything. And, you know, and it's, and I knew there was fulfillment in that too. It wasn't just an obedience thing. It was, I've been doing it my own way this whole time. And I know I can't do it on my own. I know it's lacking. I know it's not, the way it's supposed to be and then as you immerse yourself in the word it's just abundantly clear you're like oh i'm not alone <laughs> pretty much all humans are kind of on some level of the same thing and you know even if you've been in church the whole time and a, a devout christian the whole time there's always parts of your life that you haven't fully given to the lord so it's i think it's an ongoing it's part of that spirit versus flesh that paul talks about in Romans seven it's like is this going to be about me and my plan and my purpose and my goal or is it going to be about you and your plan and your purpose and your goal and I think, uh, yeah, so it's, since I've come to that realization, he's continued to sort of teach me. It's every day is a new day where you realize, oh, I didn't, I'm still kind of doing something my own way. You know, it's, it's, I don't know if we ever really fully outgrow that. We just get better at noticing it quicker. So, so. What, kind of, what kind of stuff were you doing before, um, <clears throat> what kind of stuff were you doing before, like getting into like the ministry work that you're doing now? Um, well, I started, I went to school um, right out of high school, went to school, got a degree in um, graphic design and interactive media and was a graphic designer for a lot of years. Um, within a couple of years, I, I could tell that I didn't want to do the normal, I'm, I'm sort of the oddball, I don't like to do things traditionally. So I'm like, I don't think I want to work for somebody else my whole life. And so within even a couple of years, in like 20, 23 or something, I'm like, I think I'm gonna start a business. Um, I mean, I studied a bunch of stuff about career, you know, uh, career advancement and all that. I mean, I was studying management, I was doing, you know, running different types of businesses and you know, I've gotten out of bad relationships. I got out of debt. Like I could help a person really improve their life um, in a lot of different ways. Just getting life coach certification, listening to Bible studies every single day, going to church every week, um, really cleaned up my personal life a lot. And I, I was about to make a decision that would, uh, I was about to buy a car and an expensive one. And I'm like, well, but if I get the car, I'm gonna have to stay here in order to pay for it and not be struggling again. Now, like I said, I was working at this agency. I was making decent money and, and so I'm, I'm praying to God. I'm like, what should I, I'm like, should I do this? I don't know. I was going back and forth for a couple of weeks. And I was like, you know what? I think, I think I'm just going to get the car and just stay at the job. And I said, if that's what I'm going with, I hope it's the right decision. And you know, like, I don't know. And I, I called my dad. I said, all right, I found the car I want. It's in, you know, it's pretty far. We'd have to drive. I'm like, well, we'll go this Saturday. Okay. I go to work. 12 hours later, Monday morning, and I get laid off. Oh, I was like, uh, as you're describing the story, I'm like, I feel like the hammer, the ax is going to tr fall at any moment. Yep, and, oh, yep. man. <laughs> I was, because I was like, it's either, actually, yeah. I didn't even see that part coming. I was thinking like something like, and the whole company yeah. just uh, disappeared. It's like, what? But damn, yeah. that's. Thankfully, it wasn't that crazy. Yeah. Um, it, but I, I, it to me felt like a sign from God either way. Now, if the whole company dissolved the next day, that would have been even 
even more obvious, like, all right, <laughs> get the picture I'm trying to say to you. I don't want you being stuck here for the next two years. Um, it felt like what I'm doing with most of my time um, is not eternally significant. You know, it's not, it's not bad. It's not evil to help businesses grow with their marketing or even with personal training or anything. So it's just, is this what God really has for me? Like there was something making me wanting to be a life coach. And so it was, it was that wanting to help individuals and people and, and society that I, you know, so that's what started that conversation. Very quickly, um, I realized that, that Jesus needed to be a very important part of that discussion. If they don't know Jesus and they end up dying and going to hell anyway, then it's fruitless. So I initially just realized having a ministry part of this is a very important part. Now, I just thought it was a part at that time. You know, so when I started my company it's called Empowered Living, and I had, I had an empowered Christian branch, but I also had an empowered personal training and an empowered life coaching and an empowered marketing and all this, you know, it, so it was a, a division of um, the holistic life. But yeah, so a lot of times we think it's, I'm either worldly or I'm, de de you know, dedicated to God. And we sort of have this false dichotomy, whereas if I'm dedicated to God, then I'm completely separate from all things in the world, which is different than being separate from all things that are sinful in the world. Like we're not, so, and obviously this is, this adds a lot of challenge and complexity to our lives because it's, we have to function in the world while still being led by the Holy Spirit. And it, you know, like I said, it had all these different divisions called Empowered Living. Within the first two years, it had already become apparent to me that what my heart was really most focused on was the Empowered Christian side of things. And I was still doing all these other things. And I still even have a lot of them up and available. And, it, you know, and, and it can be an occasional source of income. But it's like, that's if, if the Lord sends them to the site and they find it and they want to pay me for the service, um, it doesn't come. You know, if they get to know me, they're going to find out about Jesus through that process still, even if that's not why they're hiring me, they'll just, I'll, I'll tell them that in my free time around the service they're hiring me for. But I could tell right away that it was, or within two years, that I'm already spending most of my time, 95% of my time was being focused on the ministry side of things. And the other stuff was just sort of a distraction at that point. And so the Lord kind of laid that on my heart. You're sort of dividing me up again with all this other stuff, you know? And not unlike my previous history, where he, even he was there, but way on the back burner in some sense. And so now he was an important part of my life. A part, I was already telling people, like, this is, e this is essential. This is the most important part. I was already saying that, which was good. But I hadn't fully dedicated all of my time and energy and effort to that. Uh, you know, I've got to put God first. You know, I've got to seek first his kingdom, his righteousness. And then all these other things will be taken care of. And as we start to pursue that, then now that's, that's when the adventure really opens up. And so I'm trying to, to really help empower a lot of believers to say, um, you know, the Holy Spirit in us is giving us everything we need to be a conqueror over these other things in our life. And, it, and the stuff that God doesn't take you out of, he'll take you through. And so he, I mean, he, I believe that he does answer prayer and he will deliver us out of things and he will bless us with things. But he doesn't always do it the way that we want him to and in, in the way that we want him to. And sometimes the best gift is the Lord just coming alongside us and giving us everything we need to get through it rather than taking us out of it, right? And because going through that suffering or that trial or whatever it is, going through it with him helps mold us and shape us and prepare us, not only for future things that he has planned for us in this life, but also for the eternal life with him, right? He's molding us and shaping us into the image of Christ. So that is, um, you know, that's, there's, there's a blessing hidden within a lot of the things that we think are like bad and wrong that we shouldn't have to deal with. And if we look for that, that silver lining, that purpose behind the suffering, the, you know, the way you were born, the place you were born, the situation you were born in, whatever it is, or the stuff that happens in life, like there's a way, there's a way that God is using that to mold each one of us. So. Well, what were like some of the struggles do you think that, uh, either the struggles or the challenges that you were facing that kind of was holding you back from stepping into that calling that you feel like God was leading you towards? I think the biggest thing is that sort of the crucifixion of the old self. You know, we have to, we have to lay down that old self. We've, we've made, um, you know, we make idols that are pleasing to us. And a lot of times, I think that's the hardest thing. So with me, it was, you know, it was that old way of thinking about life. It was the old, my old plan, my old purpose. And not realizing that 
excuse me, that it's not realizing that God really, he, his way is better, you know, and we need to, you know, I had to lay down a lot of my old way of doing things because it, even, even the stuff that was good wasn't the highest and best. And, you know, to use an analogy, like from the fitness world, there's a difference between, you know, idolizing your own physique and putting all your ton, ton of time and energy and, you know, into building up a physique, whether it be very muscular or just focusing on losing weight or whatever it is. Even, even a lot of, you know, in the modern world, there's a lot of people who just focus on this, this idea of health, you know, this idea of health, whether that be mental health, physical health, emotional health, it's just this idea of health. And they sort of, um, it can become an idol, you know, this, you know, it's, it's, you, it's essential, it's essentially self-worship right? It's, you're putting, you are the most important thing, right? All the pieces of you that make you, you are the most important thing. And everything else revolves around that. If the relationship's bad for your health, then it's, then it's get away from that. Even if the relationship might be bad because of stuff you're doing, right? If they make you feel bad, then they have to go, right? Even if maybe they're just being good and they're exposing your sin, but they're making you feel bad by talking about your sin, you know? So it's, so just because something feels bad doesn't necessarily mean it is bad. Um, so that and that's so there's that's a harmful way of taking a good thing and making it into a bad thing. Whereas if you view your body, okay, my body's the temple of the Holy Spirit, and I want to take care of the temple, it's, it's good stewardship, right? That's a very different look. I'm still taking care of the body, I'm still taking care of the mind and the emotions and the relationships and everything else. But now I'm not doing it only for me. Now I'm doing it because I can serve God with this temple if this temple is not super broken, <laughs> you know, like if, if this temple is like really broken and, and, you know, I'm not, and, and really the more you study scripture, you learn that the Holy Spirit is, that's one of his functions, you know, to lead us into all truth. So that means a lot of false beliefs that were breaking you before I got to go. And if you've got a lot of trauma and, and pain and, and all kinds of addictions and, and faults that you do, those things need to get cleaned up and healed up and dealt with so that um, you can use the rest, all of you, right? Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And it's like, so we need to do that. <laughs> we need, like he said that, let's do that. And when we do that, it changes the dynamic of how we do all this other stuff. So I would say at least not since, you know, since I came out of my little high school years of getting into a lot of trouble and nonsense, um, for the most part, I was still, you know, I, I mean, I was getting educated. I was, I was somewhat disciplined. I was active. I was, you know, I was doing a lot of things that I wanted to do in life, but I wasn't doing it for a, um, a selfless purpose. It wasn't in devotion to God. It was, I was doing my own thing. And what would you say would be like the tipping point of what had you go from where you were before fully pursuing the vision that God gave you, you know, the calling that he gave you. And, uh, like, what was that thing that like was the tipping point that took you into doing ministry as, you know, like a full-time thing besides the whole, uh, being fired thing. Yeah. Unless that was it. If that was it, then. Um, I would say it was very gradual though. Um, you know, sometimes it's very dramatic. And for me, you know, I think we all learn in different ways. Sometimes God needs to just hit up, up hit us upside the head and wake us up that way. For me, it was he did it slowly, I think as part of a learning process. You know, it was he did it slowly, teaching me things over a several year period. And that helped me really wake up. Um, definitely the, the breakup when I was, I think it was right around, right around 30 years old, 38 now. So the, all this is relative within the last decade. Um, and so it was during that breakup when like life sucked. And I was like, and I ended up, I was the initiator of the breakup, but it was the relationship had gotten bad and it was, there was a lot of emotional turmoil. You know, it's like, why am I dealing with all this? And there's just a lot of frustration and, and um, anxiety and it was at the end of that and I said all right after that relationship was over um, I'm going to stay single for a while sort of get my head straight refocus on myself um, that, that's another thing I noticed back later it was it made it about myself still um, but I mean for a non-christian there's a lot of wisdom in what I'm saying and doing but now I sort of look at it through Christian eyes and say well it may have been good but it wasn't the best so but there was still wisdom and all right I'm going to be single for a while I wasn't like desperate run to the next relationship. I've never been that, that way. Um, I've always had self-control and, and, you know, um, so it was like, uh, like, how did I let myself get into these bad situations? Um, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to take care of myself for a while. I'm going to focus on the business. I'm going to, you know, get my finances in order. I'm going to do all this stuff. And that I would say within that same, 
year is when I got that other job at the agency. And it was just seeing people who, you know, were very successful financially, but not happy. Um, that it made me start to reflect on what it means to like be fulfilled. And through that, it helped me, um, it helped me start to search for more meaning and, you know, and just getting back in church and starting to read the word and stuff. So I really immersed myself in, um, a, a God centered lifestyle and within, you know, within a year or so. And I think that really opened up my eyes. So a lot of times I'm ministering to people, I'm saying, you, you have to do that. Like you can't stay separated from God and then wonder why God's not showing up in your life. You have to, he's there. He wants you to do this. Right. And so he was giving me the unction within to, to invest myself into him. And at that same time, he was responding to that willingness to do that. Um, you know, he could have slapped me upside the head at any time during my twenties. And maybe he did through some of these relationships and I didn't get the wake up call, but you know, so, you know, maybe so, <laughs> but it was, you know, I think he's, you know, scripture teaches that he's drawing all of us. And, you know, in my theology, I believe that we can resist that. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think it's irresistible. I think, I think we can resist that. Um, and I think he makes it compelling enough that we hopefully don't want to, but it was, it was when I started to do that, I really felt like him shaping who I am. And then it was just a matter of time, right? Once the Holy Spirit was, and I think around this point is when I became born again, it was just very different. You know, I, I stopped living in sin. I stopped, and my whole focus sh shifted. I mean, you know, it's, so it, it was very, um, it, it was gradual, but at the same time, it was dramatic. You know, I talked to people and I'd be like, um, I, I remember I'd, I'd have friends. Um, it, it's very obvious when friends will be like, they'll say something and then they'll say Jesus as sort of a derogatory, they don't even mean to do it in our culture these days. They'll just, you know, they'll say God or Jesus, like as a statement, you know, it's basically blasphemy, but it's, they don't mean it to be blasphemous. They, it's just part of their vernacular and they'll be talking and then they'll say, oh, Jesus. And then they'll look at me. Yeah. And, and they'll be like, you're like, what? Yeah, no. So, so they'll you know, they say Jesus Christ a lot of times. Um, but, and they'll look at me and they'll be like, oh, sorry. And so when I started to notice that, I'm like, ah, so I'm, they see me differently, um, which, was, which, was, which was a great confirmation that I am genuinely changing. And I remember um, also the same thing with cussing as well. Like, I'm like, I stopped, I stopped cussing and I'd talk to people um, and, and be like, yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't, like I stopped pornography, I stopped all this kind of stuff. Like I stopped fornication even probably a good year before I finally quit pornography. And it was just, I just really had a lot of study and prayer and really like, this really is evil and wicked. And it's, it took a progression to get there. Like once I was convinced, once the Holy Spirit had convicted me of it, then it's like, oh, this is, it's not even a question anymore. Um, but yeah, so there was a lot of, a lot of slow growths in different ways back and forth. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, it, I, I think if a person has an overnight experience, amen, great for them. Um, it's, it maybe it's easier that way, I don't know. <laughs> but I think there's definitely, I think even if you do have that experience, it will be, there's still gonna be a lot of maturity and growth that happens afterwards. So, I mean, really, you don't, you don't know until the fruit's evident if, if there's a new tree there. Yeah, you know? I was gonna say, like, I, I, had a lit I had an experience in church where I literally, it, it felt like there was oil being dipped from like the top of my head and just surrounded my body. And then I had like another experience where like I was just praying and like the image, like it, like it sounds weird and like it doesn't sound as painful as it might now that I'm about to say it out loud, but like in my head, I could fully visualize it. It, it felt like warm gold was coating my muscles underneath my skin. Like I had these two very like vivid experiences, yet there wasn't any dramatic transformation. And yeah. as you were saying, you know, it was like maturity after that. But yeah. if anything, like I, I feel like personally, like I feel like you and I have kind of some similarities. We're both like very analytical, but like value relationships. And those things have like a weird thing of like not, because relationships are so messy, but like one thing is to be very analytical. And somehow with the way that brains are wired with that type of thing, when it comes to like learning, like when it comes to learning life lessons, uh, it, it like takes repetition and deeper understanding like some people can get the slight slap on the hand and then they're like i'm never doing that again but like yeah. it's like okay well maybe like and then there's you know other people who are thinking like like oh well all right maybe i won't try to do it that way not that i'm trying to avoid being punished i'll just want to try doing the thing i wanted to do but slightly differently maybe it's not as bad that time yeah. but i had some I had some crazy stuff and also like the when you had mentioned uh 
when, when friends would be like, oh, G Jesus Christ or whatever. And then they'd look to you. I've had, I've had friends where like, they'll, they'll curse. They'll just be like, oh, like, you know, they'll say a curse word. Like they'll turn around look for me and they'll be like, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, why do you, why do you, you don't gotta apologize. To, do you, do you not want to curse? Do you not want to say curse words? You don't have to. You know, if you don't want to, you don't gotta apologize to me. You have to appreciate that they're trying to respect you. You know, it's like I, I appreciate that. You know, it's uh, I'm not so sensitive that it will like send me into a frantic or you know, like no, I can handle it. I, you know, I had a long life before I became really devout. So nothing you say or do is gonna offend me or or scare me or yeah, I I, I can handle it. You know, it's kind of cool. <laughs> like some people forget that. Like when you have such a dramatic transformation. And I'm sure you may have seen that with like personal training. When people have such a dramatic physical transformation, others will genuinely forget that they were out of shape. And um, yeah. it's like, no, like, it's like I had to go through a process. But when the transformation is so dramatic, it's just like not even in other people's minds. But ironically, like, you know, sometimes like we still struggle with that old identity. And if only like the transformation was as dramatic in other people's eyes as it is in our own minds, that would be, you know, super helpful. Yeah. But uh, yeah, not to get like too sidetracked or whatever, but but like, so where where did you see your life was going if you didn't try to pursue this calling or if you didn't try to transform your habits and, and lifestyle? I, once I really sort of dedicated my life to God, um, and I guess maybe I could make a distinction between dedicating my life to God and dedicating my career or my life um, style to God, if that makes sense. Like there's a, like you can be a devout Christian and not be in ministry full time. So um, I don't think that everyone who has a call to serve the Lord needs to become a pastor or, you know, that's, that's a false idea that has evolved over time. Um, you know, the world would be a better place if devout Christians were in every sphere of life, you know? Um, so I think that the first, you know, me giving my, my personal life to God, meaning I'm going to live in such a way to please the Lord, to glorify him um, that draws me nearer to him, that makes me more like Christ and, and builds this relationship. Um, that, I mean, that was like non-negotiable really. Once, once you really learn the truth, it's like, okay, that's, um, I, I will be happy and fulfilled and will have eternal life if I do this. And I won't, if I don't, um, it's, you know, it's, it's the difference between life and death. It's the difference between eternal fulfillment and eternal torment. You know, it's, it's, um, like once you see that it's like day and night, like you're like, there's not even an option to not consider this. So, um, but as far as the ministry side of things, that. Yeah, I mean, it would definitely be very different if I were to, say, be a self-employed, multi-purpose, life coach, counselor, you know, self-improvement kind of speaker kind of a person and have that as my focus. That has a Christian bent to it. Like, I'm not, I wouldn't be teaching anything unchristian, but it wouldn't necessarily be all about following Christ either. It would be, it would be a very different type of lifestyle. Um, and I think the main difference would be that I'm not, I wouldn't be personally, I wouldn't be living up to the calling that he's put on my life. You know, if that was where he wanted me to be, then that's what would have happened. I wouldn't have gravitated towards the one side for two years before going, why am I still trying to evenly divide this stuff? You know, um, I just felt like I was naturally gravitating towards ministry. You know, like I said before, you can have all the other, if at the end of the day, you can have all the other stuff at 100%, and if this one area is neglected, then you still won't be happy. And we should just keep learning and looking for the different ways he's working in our life and in our heart and in our past and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And, and I'm just going to go with what I think is right until I learn otherwise or get new wisdom. And we just keep pursuing that. And, and I found in my own life as well, um, and it's even shifted some of the things I focus on in ministry, we just have to keep pursuing that. And as we do, we have that confidence that we're in alignment with God's will that we will be used to our highest purpose as well. Whenever you're, I mean, either way, even if you're dead wrong, right? Even if like, I think the Lord wants me to do this calling and you're dead wrong. If you're doing it in obedience to the Lord and you're trying to listen to the Holy Spirit, like God's going to give you so much grace in your mistake of what you think is right, you know, because you're doing it for all the right reasons. Um, and I think the truth is he's probably going to guide you if you're really searching for his will anyway. So yeah, it's, it's just way more fulfilling. And I've, and I've, just continue to grow and and learn more um and it's, you know you're gonna have happiness and fulfillment in doing that um because even if everything crashes and burns or you know you're just helping a few people instead of millions you're still being obedient to god you're still um you're still doing what god has designed you to do like you can you know you can do the shape assessment and say okay here's 
this seems to be in alignment and, and it's what I want to do and it's what I'm passionate about and it's all this stuff. And she's just going to be more fulfilled. And, and I think if I would have went and did things my old way, I would just be less fulfilled, less happy. Um, I would be less fruitful either in the short term or in the long term. Um, I would bring less glory to God in the long term. Um, I wouldn't grow in my relationship with him nearly as much because he, he had, you know, it's when we do sometimes his way that helps us grow the most. And so it has not been without its challenges over the years, you know, and he's all, and all those little experiences have helped shape and mold me. So yeah. It's, but yeah. And the more I go forward, the more I'm confident of that in the future. Like I, I don't know hundred percent of what's going to happen in the future. We'll see what happens. But I know that if I keep pursuing his will for my life and I keep um, trying to be obedient to that will and keep listening to his prompting in my heart, then then I, it will be more fulfilling and satisfying. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of like this analogy that someone had told me where it's like, uh, it's like a rolling boulder. Like if you're trying to steer the direction of a boulder <clears throat> or even like a car, like if you're trying to steer the direction of a car, the car or this boulder has to first be moving before you can adjust which direction it's going. So like, you know, you can turn the steering wheel on a car, but it's like not gonna start going left until it's like getting some momentum going behind it. And it's kind of like this similar idea where as long as like, if you in your heart genuinely believe that the direction you're going is the direction where God wants to lead you, even if your discernment was off, as long as you really like believe in your heart, you're going where God wants you to go and you give that to God, then God has, God will most definitely steer you in the right direction. Cause I've had so many times where it's like, okay, I gotta go this way. And then, oops, no, gotta go the other way. Like on my, on my YouTube channel, you can see like in the very beginning in the YouTube intros, I talk about like, hi, welcome to the current Christian where we X, Y, and Z. And then like five videos later, oh, hey, welcome to the current Christian where we A, B, and C. It's like totally different, but it's just like kind of trusting that like, oh yeah, God will take it and just sort of like mold things as, as we develop and as we are more in tune with, with where he's leading us. But like on that note, like I, I really want to hear a bit more about Empower Christian. So what was it like, can you describe like the moment where you felt like you were in, where you felt like you got the inspiration or, or the vision from God to, to start Empower Christian? Yeah. Um. I would say, yeah, as, as soon as I had that awakening that, you know, to give my life to the Lord fully, then I knew that Christianity was going to be a very important, essential part of, of my life and of my future, um, you know, my future work. Um, and then also for everyone else that I encountered that, was, that wanted to learn from me, um, it needed to be an essential part. Um, and originally it was, you know, Empowered Christian along with Empowered Living and Empowered Personal Training and all this other stuff. And, and then I, I later ended up um, adding ministries to it and, and put that as my main focus. So now we would identify as Empowered Christian Ministries. Um, and yeah, and to briefly touch on what you were saying before, um, yeah, if you, you could even go, go back to the Wayback Machine, you know, online and look and you could say like, oh, that was Brian's old logo. And then it, here's his old vision statement and mission statement. And then, and then it changed and then it did this and did this and did this. Yeah, so now, now it's a whole different logo, whole different vision and mission statement and everything. It's, you know, and this changed, um, it's changed a couple of times. And, you know, we're always learning. Um, I think now um, I've really come to believe that that this is that the ministry represents um, what I am um, created for and called to be able to do for the body, and and that is that this is empowered way of um, life, right? So it's even even before just you know being with 23 and starting you know a little business and and getting out of debt and taking on dog coaching and um you know just a, a lot of these little things that i've done over the years that have helped because i've always had this this kind of um self-improvement kind of event this this kind of all right more introverted and then you get me talking and i won't shut up kind of a thing happening and so it's you know it's and a lot of people have told me like it's sort of infectious like yeah you do like to talk but it's like you're not just rambling on like you're saying interesting stuff that matters and it's like okay it's like i like to teach and i like to coach and i like to to do all these things um, and I'm always looking for truth and I'm always learning and growing and, and learning new things about all different kinds of subjects. So I'm um, well-rounded. And I think with, um, I, I think the primary thrust of Empower Christian um, was, it was twofold. One, it was, I look back and I saw all the time that I kind of wasted with my own life and said, I, I was a believer the whole time, but I just didn't really embrace what that really meant. Um, and I didn't really get to know God and get to know his word and really try to make a difference in the world in a way that matters eternally. And so as I did that, uh, that's where I wanted to help others. And if we can, you know, improve normal things in life for those people, great, you know, 
it, it'll help with all the other stuff, right? Um, but, but it was to really help empower them, um, to help empower individuals. Um, and then, if, you know, if I get the opportunities to empower whole churches and, and, and preach to a whole church and, and really, you know, impact a lot of people at once, um, you know, and I started writing, writing this book. I don't know if you can even see this. Um, can, you, can you see it? Um, yeah, it's the book I'm working on now. It's called The Empowered Christian Roadmap. And it's, it's basically a how-to manual for the Christian lifestyle. And it's actually kind of coincidental, perhaps, or providential, that you use the metaphor of the car. Hey, I was just thinking that. <laughs> Did you do that before or after you saw the book? Um, oh. No, I, just, like, I was just okay. like, wait, actually, like, only after you pointed it out, I was like, oh, whoa, yeah. Oh, okay. like, I'm like, and feel okay. free to use that analogy. It's not my, right? I'm not copyright claiming it. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I like it. And, it's, well, and that's the whole book is it's this idea of a roadmap. And I mean, I, I use the car and, I, and my dad was actually an auto mechanic for a lot of years. So it's the whole first chapter is you got to throw out your old map, get a new map. Second chapter is you're a brand new car. And I, so I'm taking this metaphor through the whole entire book and it's broken down into chapters and then little subcategories in each chapter. So it really is like a reference manual. You can read it once all the way through and then go back throughout life. It, Cause it really, it covers, um, it's basically a marriage of good biblical theology and practical living. It's com combining those two things. So I'm directly coming against a lot of false teachings. Um, I'm directly preaching up like a lot of sound doctrine. I mean, tons and tons of Bible quotes throughout the whole thing. I mean, I go into detail on what the Trinity is and why it's important. I go into detail on the, you know, what baptism means. And, and I mean, I'm, it, it's thorough, um, but accessible. And, you know, and, and even later, I, you know, I'm using the metaphor of the car. You know, I call the church the auto club. You know, so it's the whole, I, I take the metaphor all the way through, which I think will be helpful to help people understand. But it's all... It's all meant to empower. So that's really, I want more Christians getting off the sidelines and starting to get in the game because we're all called to be a part of the game. Now, it doesn't mean we all need to enter public ministry and be in the church. It just means we need to be in the game in whatever way God's calling each one of us to do. So I'm totally like on board with what you're doing, trying to encourage people to, to get out there and start embracing these things because the Holy Spirit that has been given to us is he's empowering us to do all kinds of stuff. And, you know, we have a big God. And a lot of times we think very small and we think, you know, it's just, I just, if I could just say a little 10 second prayer every day, that's good enough. It's like, like, no, you got to learn to really submit. And if you do, then it's going to, it's going to make a difference. So just like, as like a wrap up, are there any like last thoughts, last uh, stuff you want to talk about in terms of like the, uh, in terms of Empower Christian, you know, some of the different services or, or products that you provide, just kind of like a little wrap up thing where you can kind of more so dive deeper, like talking about uh, like, like what you, what you provide and what you offer people. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we do lots of things. Um, the book will be, you can get the little freebie version on the website um, at empoweredchristian.org. That's M-P-O-W-E-R-E-D christian.org. Um, and then that, the print version should be coming out, I'm thinking in April, um, but we'll see. Uh, I, think, I think April. It, the previous release was supposed to be February and, and things got behind schedule. But um, so that, I think that will be big. And I'm hoping to do more preaching and speaking about that and, and do interviews and stuff about it once it's done. So I'll definitely send you a copy when, when I got that and, and, and keep you in the loop. Um, and uh, other things that we do, um, I have a couple of online courses, um, just training and equipping. Um, and those can also be taught in local churches and stuff. So if there's any pastors or um, elders out there that could, that want to bring it. Um, we have a spiritual warfare bootcamp, which is a seven part series on spiritual warfare. Um, we also have one, a 12 part series called prioritize your life. Right. So it's, um, um, and it, so I take you through chronologically seven steps. And so that could be done, you know, one hour a week for, for 12 weeks, or it could be, you know, a weekend conference type of thing. Um, I also do one-on-one -on -one count counseling and life coaching, deliverance ministry, pastoral counseling, um, even marriage and premarital counseling. And I do it just like this, uh, you know, over zoom, um, sessions can be scheduled right from the website. Um, we also do, if you are in the Pinellas County, Florida area, um, we have a small group that meets once a week. Um, it, it's not really a church because it's really more like a small group. Um, it's like a home fellowship type thing called Disciple Makers Church. Uh, we do that. Um, what else do we got? There are, um, I've created some, I've, I've taken from some of my graphic design background and sort of married that with theology and made a couple of things. Um, I made a couple different posters. One of them is uh, really cool. Um, it shows the transformation from being dead in our sin to being glorified. And it's, it just shows like the human person changing. It shows like a person, like it shows like six different, you know, models. And then it shows like this part changes here and here's the scripture to support it. And this is what changes. So it, it's, it's, um, 
it's kind of cool looking, um, but it's, it's also an educational tool because it has all the scriptures underneath and it shows the difference between when you're born again and when you're not and what's different. And then it shows if you're born again, but sinning and what is being affected. And then when you're born again and being obedient and being holy, and then when you're fully glorified. So this way it can help people visualize, well, how come a person can be a Christian and look like they're still sinning and doing wrong or a person claims to be, you know, so it's, it helps people understand, okay, this is justification. This is regeneration when this happens. And then this is when sanctification happens. And then this is when you're being obedient. And so it, a person can easily in five minutes say, okay, that's where I think I am. And that's what I need to do to get to the next one. And so it's, it's a, it's a helpful tool. I think um, I created it originally just uh, for, for me. And then I said, you know, this might be something cool. So I made it available. You can print it on canvas and, and order it from the website and all that. Um, and uh, I do a lot of writing on Quora, a website called Quora. Um, some, I've been meaning to take a lot of that and, and condense it and turn it into YouTube videos. Um, I do have some YouTube videos as well that teach different topics. Um, but uh, I want to also put it, I have a blog on the website and I want to add a lot of the Quora stuff to the website. Um, but the Quora, we're actually within the next couple of months, it records how many views your writings get. And I think we're, I think I'm over, over 2,000 answers that have been answered. And um, we're, I think we're about, in the next couple of months, we're going to approach a million views total. So it's, yeah, so it's gotten, and that's in, I think maybe two and a half years. So it's gotten a lot of, a lot of traction. It continues to increase every month. So um, a lot of, a lot of things that people wrestle with and don't have answers to. Um, I invest a lot of time and energy into putting it there. Um, and that's, it's all available online for free. Um, so yeah, it's just a few of the things I'm, I'm hoping to finish up the book in the next couple of months and all the one-on-one the -on -one counseling and all that just helps bring in a little bit of income to help. Um, I would like to hopefully do more speaking. Um, so obviously the, the most, believers unless they have a church or something unless they have influence in their church um, they might not be able to do that but if any pastor is interested um, i'd love to be doing more of that in the coming year um, i'd like to go and make more of these courses online as well um, so in that way people can learn at home and the the online courses that are up now they can be they're very affordable and um, i have it set up to where you can you know you watch videos of me teaching it and i got you know i got the, the whole green screen behind you and all that kind of stuff and I, you know, I got slides that show all the scriptures right there. So it's, um, it's, you know, very professionally done. And, you know, I think the Lord has used my graphic design experience in, in a lot, in a lot of cool ways. So I'm, I'm, I, I don't see it as a waste. I see it as him preparing me for what I'm doing now. So I think a lot of people need to remember that it's whatever you did before God was preparing you for something else. So keep that in mind. And, and so, but yeah, that, those courses, and I actually have a way where you can download the slideshows. And I say, if you, you know, you're welcome to share these slideshows with other people, get little small groups or home churches together and use them, you know, and, and because the more we're educated and we understand truth, then and being empowered at the same time, all of it is here's the truth. And then now do something with that truth. Right. It's to empower them. So um, the greatest thing is just knowing truth and then being motivated to actually do something with that. So I want everyone, you know, go watch a course, learn yourself, but then invite a few other people with you and go through it. And if you want, you can download the slide and then teach it yourself to them. And, or you can let me do it and let's watch the video either way. But at least the, the option is available. If you think you might want to be a teacher practice this way, you can watch me teach it first. So you know all the stuff already and then get just the slides and the slides have most of the information on it as well. So it's kind of, you can read through the slide almost, but it helps you practice presenting, right? So it's, it's something that could be easily transportable to different groups, to unbelievers, you can even use it and download it, put it on a phone and go and witness with it. So um, just lots of little things like that that we've come up with over the last couple of years to help um, inspire and motivate people, um, believers to, to walk into the fullness of everything that the Lord's calling them to be and to discover what that is and then walk it out. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. And I'll be sure to like, yeah, when, after this, if you can like send me any links to either like social media or like the websites and the courses and so I'll definitely be sure to have that in the video description. But Brian, it was, wow. You know, I was super, like, there's so many, like, I, I'm really looking forward to going back through this video. Cause like, there's so many like pure, like not to say that the other stuff you weren't saying wasn't really good, but there's definitely like some really good pure nugget nuggets of wisdom in there that I'm really looking forward to uh, going back and like reviewing and, and, and listening towards and also checking out uh, the Empower Christian Roadmap. That sounds like really cool. I'm also looking forward to seeing, did you do the graphic design stuff for the book? I did, I did the whole thing, yeah. I wrote it and did all, there's, there's lots of little illustrations and stuff in there. Um, yeah, it's very colorful. So it's, uh, yeah, and, and a lot of the, even the posters and stuff. Um, a, a lot of the book has um, clip art type stuff in it. So I didn't custom design everything in it, but the actual design, the layout and all that, the cover designs and everything all mine, so.
That's very cool. And and this, of course, like when it is um, available in like the physical copy, I'll be sure to uh, put like the link for it on Amazon or whichever like website you prefer. Um, I'll put that link in the video description as well. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's also um, I have a landing page set up on the website that talks all about the book. Um, people can pre-order it if they're interested. Um, so and I, I have a little pre-order special set up where if you pre-order the book, um, you get a discount on what the price that the final price I think it will be. And you also get a free ebook version. And I plan on making an audiobook recording later as well. And that'll be included free. So you basically get a free all different kind of you get the print book and then you get all the other options for free as well if you pre-order. Um, because it helps me, you know, keep the lights on while I'm working on this book. You don't get paid to write a book, so until it's done. <laughs> so yeah, man, I appreciate I appreciate it. So it's, uh, it's always good to to connect with people and, and to share thoughts and ideas and inspire one another. And um, yeah, man, it's just, it's a blessing. Thank you for, for having me. Oh, thank you for, for being here, Ryan. Yeah, cool. it was great, great talking with you. Well, I hope I enjoy, you know, the rest of your week. It's still pretty early on in the week and stuff like that. But yeah, man, hey, thanks, thanks again for coming on here and, and spending your time and sharing some of your wisdom with us. All right, my pleasure. Yeah. God bless you. Have a great one. Yeah, you too. Hey guys, thank you so 